All right. So as a last speaker, I would like to thank the organizers, Ming Chen especially. Yes. <laughs> So it, it was a great opportunity for me to see a lot of people who have been working on M5 brains for a long time, and uh, some of the people I met uh, first time. So I will talk today about T-duality in little string theories. Uh, this work is based on three papers I published with some of my young collaborators, Juno Kim, Jungmin Kim, Seok Kim, and Jemok Park. So roughly, I will talk about Tokomadero theories about which we heard so much about. And then I will talk about 1,1 and Tokomadero little string theories. And then T dualities between 1,1 and Tokomadero, even though it's a bit old subject, uh, maybe most of you uh, never heard of it, so I'll repeat some of it. And then I'll talk briefly about 1,0 little string theories, T dualities in there. And then uh, confirming T dualities, now we'll use T dualities all the way around and trying to find a partition function for some cases where we have a hard time to finding it. And then I will conclude. So, uh, two commodity uh, theories appearing in, uh, on M5 brains we heard it so much about and the mysterious N cube, but for some of us, N cube is not mysterious anymore, but well. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as we heard, there are uh, three kind of uh, three types of uh, Tukumadero theories in 60. A type and D type can be interpreted in terms of uh, uh, M5 brains or M5 brains or o M5 brains. Uh, in Abelian case, for single M5 brain, there is a, a self-dual tensor field and five scalar field and uh, some chiral fermions. And then M2 brains connecting M5 brains appear as a self-dual string. Uh, interacting with a uh, uh, three-point tensor field. Uh, this can be, of course, uh, driven from the type 2B with ADE uh, singularities. Now, we can compactify a theory to 5D, then we end up with a 5D n equal to supersymmetry Young Mu theories. Now, Tukumadu theory in 6D is supposed to be very mysterious, but at the end of 5D, we have a Young Mu coupling. That's all there is. So my conjecture is that in 6D, uh, you can trace the host the origin of the Young-Milk uh, interactions, uh, which are given roughly in terms of uh, self-dual string junctions, and uh, which generate the uh, structure constant of Young-Milk couplings. I think that's all there is, nothing more. Uh, you can add a lot more, maybe there are a lot more, maybe it's not local, but only interaction to commodity theory is basically uh, FABC uh, in terms of self string junctions. Uh, but uh, so M5 brain becomes T4 brains and photon becomes uh, matrix uh, uh, tensor mode is a photon and the instantons are made of the uh, tens uh, tensor mode going around the circles and so on. <laughs> and uh, so in 5D, we want to count a PPS object which is a uh, near left, but uh, uh, related to uh, a Tionic super tube, which Tong and uh, uh, Lambert Tong has introduced. And then uh, Peter uh, Townsend uh, reinterpreted that as a super tube. What it means is that suppose I have two T4 brains separate from each other, and then PPS equation is still uh, self dual equation with a scalar field uh, along this fifth direction is equal to A0, and then this is Gauss's law. And so, <clears throat> Usually, if I have G0 brain, which is instant on, then D0 will stick to the D4. But if you look at PPS equation, then you solve the uh, instant on equation and self dual equation, which has an enormous amount of zero mode, AK zero mode for uh, SG2. Uh, for K instant ons, then uh, you so solve around that background. And once you uh, solution is given with asymptotic value of phi, taking a value of V minus V, then a configuration is fixed. Uh, so moduli fix the uh, characteristic of solutions, and then that generate, uh, uh, then from solution you generate an electric charge, and then uh, uh, turns out that because it's su super tube, even though it's made of fundamental string S and T0 brains, there's a, a ring of the T2 brain connecting uh, T4 brains, uh, along which uh, fundamental string and T0 brains are melted, 
And so there's a momentum flowing through it. And so there is an enormous amount of angular momentum along the, say, four-dimensional uh, space with J, uh, J1, J3, J four angular momentums and some uh, outside angular momentums. So there's a huge amount of degeneracy in this classical configuration. And then, uh, so there's degeneracy, and so for given uh, classical uh, uh, charge sector, one can quantize it, modularized space quantization, and so on. Instead, uh, we can think about uh, some uh, uh, index uh, generating partition function where instead we sum of the all the modular uh, Hilbert space, and then we put a weight on the each angular momentums, including electric charge, and then we calculate it with index. Uh, for k instant, and that's the uh, index of partition function. Now we are doing k theory, then we have to do uh, all the partition function together, including perturbative part of uh, kd field, and the perturbative part is just W bosons, which is, carries no instant numbers. Uh, so uh, now there's a very nice way of looking at the single particle index. So if we have a dionic instant term with a given electric charge and angular momentum, as a quantum state, you don't know how many overlap of the state is. So the way you uh, split uh, this state into the single particle states is by using plastic exponent. And once you do that, then you form a very simple forms. And uh, one of key characteristics of uh, uh, this uh, pl uh, plastic exponent, so single particle free energy, is that single free, uh, particle free energy, there is only one center of mass. So that because we turn on the omega deformation along the one, two, and three, four directions, there are simple poles which captures the single center of mass. And then because this dionic instant carries a huge amount of angular momentum, uh, that's characterized by this uh, J plus and J minus angular momentum uh, uh, functions. And then uh, there is some instant numbers, there's some electric charge, there's uh, uh, R momentum, and then coefficient uh, comes out to be non-negative integer, which is called the uh, Kopakuma Vapa invariant. So in some sense, uh, the, the way I see the necklace of partition function and Kopakuma Vapa invariant is basically counting uh, quantum state of uh, dionic instantons. So for example, uh, if we think about single, uh, this U1 gauge theory, then uh, I'm, for example, even in UN theories, uh, if we think about the state without angular moment, uh, without electric charge, then it's the same as the sum of the instantons without any uh, electric charge, then that's the very simple expression for single particle uh, index. So you can see there's a simple force, and then you can expand in Q power, which means K instantons, and then this characterizes the this uh, uh, mode is uh, <coughs> uh, mode is uh, tensor mode, so tensor mode generates this kind of uh, factors, and uh, this can be obtained. Even though you we obtain this from instant calculations, you can just get it by perturbative by you looking at the tensor mode in 6D, then looking at the chemical potential, calculate the partition function, then they generate the same answer. So. <coughs> Now, so this can be obtained, and we found all this expression for, uh, we have standard way of calculating this uh, by generalizing uh, necklace of uh, calculations. Uh, this can be, again, confirmed from 60 calculations. Uh, instead, we can think about 60 theories where uh, we have an NM5 range, then M2 range along the one directions, then we are connecting uh, this M5 range using the, uh, M2 brains, so <coughs> then we are calculating uh, elliptic genus along the, this self dual strings, and the one way of generating a field theory on M2 brain is uh, by introducing single uh, T6 brain after compactifying one of transverse directions, and then M2 brain becomes T2 brains, so there are uh, M5 brain becomes NS5 brains, so there are T2 brains, and then you introduce a single T6 brain, which he, in uh, infinite coupling limit uh, becomes just a regular uh, R4. And once we have that, then we have a quiver theory along the N1, N2, N3 uh, instant strings, or 
uh, t self your strings, and then one can generate a partition function. And uh, <coughs> so this partition function of 6D will be made of the same kind of characterization. Uh, it will be made of a 6D perturbative part, which comes from tensor mode of moving with speed of light, and then uh, stringy contribution where uh, there are n minus one strings, and then for each string, uh, number is given, then you turn on the uh, <coughs> chemical potential omega deformation parameters, and then we are basically count summing over the all possible momentum sums, and then uh, that can be generated uh, given in terms of standard form, which is part of which is done by Kunlum and the probably Amir worked on this uh, problem before. So we have this partition function from uh, type 2A pictures or 6D pictures, and then instanton calculations, uh, they, they gen it turns out to generate an identical partition function because they are the same theory. So 5D approach is that we are looking at small circles and then uh, self your strings wrapping the five dimensional circle is uh, very light because the circle is very small and that is W bosons and then instantons which is KK mode becomes very heavy. So we are counting index using uh, 5D Young Lee series where instantons are heavy, then we sum up the, all the electric charge. On the other end, in 60 calculations, we are thinking about the case where circuit is very big, uh, so strings are very heavy, and then uh, momentum is very light. So we are solving over the, all the momentum, then we get uh, elliptic genus along those strings. And then, uh, of course, they generate the same answer. Now, in these calculations, if you look at very carefully, n cube appears. And one of the reasons n cube appears is uh, not that mysterious. <coughs> So here, suppose I have three M5 rings. And then suppose I have self your string connecting one and three. Or in terms of uh, 5D pictures, I have T4 brains, and then there is uh, W bosons, one, three. Then uh, T0 brain, leaving on uh, two brain, there is threshold bound state. So even though you have a W13 uh, uh, and then instantaneously living on second D4 brain, there is threshold bound state. That can be obtained. And from the this uh, <coughs> uh, ellipse genus perspective, even though I have a fundamental string connecting one to three, uh, there, you can have an open up of this uh, uh, self your string such a way this both part is moving with speed of light. And that generates uh, uh, additional degrees of freedom, and if you collect them, n cube is there. So you can see that's a junction, anti-junction, moving with speed of light, which is BPS. <clears throat> right, so that's my summary of Tokuma series. Now let's go to little string theory. Is there any question? Right, so Tukumadero little string theory arises as uh, <coughs> by thinking about uh, physics of M5 brains, but we are compactifying one of the transverse directions so that, uh, and then take it as uh, M circles. So we have M5 brains, and then uh, compactify one of circles, then wrap that with M2 brains. And the M2 brain wrapping the circle is uh, a fundamental string. And then uh, M5 brain becomes the NS5 brains. So, <coughs> so one could have stopped from 2 comma 0 super confirm free theory, then just compactify one of transverse directions, then you get uh, 2 comma 0 little string theories. Or you could stop from the <coughs> type 2A theories, and then you think of NS5 brains, and then you can think about uh, putting them together and uh, fixing the uh, string lengths to be fixed and make a string uh, coupling cones to zero, then gravity is decoupled. I think I put the things together, but well, there's other way of doing it using LLF uh, singularities, 
Uh, so this is basically the same picture we start with. Uh, uh, <coughs> right, so it's the same picture. But the way we can get the partition function is by thinking about, uh, again, uh, NS5 brains, single D6 brains. And then uh, previously, we got the partition function by adding the strings M2 and T2 brains between NS5 brains. But now this circular direction is periodic, so we have one more string to add. Now, one comma one little string theory is uh, rather straightforward. Uh, it's again a theory on N and S5 brains in type 2B theory with a uh, uh, limit where G string uh, goes to zero. In that case, uh, uh, <coughs> we can take a S dual picture of it uh, before taking a limit. Then we see that. NS5 brain becomes uh, T5 brains, on which uh, we have uh, five, uh, 60 super young mill series with uh, super symmetry 1, 1. And then <coughs> after S dual, one can take a limit where uh, string coupling goes to zero. And then uh, young mill coupling constant in 60 becomes uh, uh, dimension pool, and the G young mill square is LS square, which is string length square. So that if you think about instant on string in 60 young mill theories, and then its tension is identical to fundamental string. So on NS5 brain, you have single uh, fundamental string moving around, and that becomes a little string. Now, <clears throat> 60 young mill theory turns out to be, of course, we know it's non-renormalizable and three loop divergent. Uh, however, uh, this little string theory give us a sort of ultraviolet uh, completion. And also, interestingly, uh, if you think about uh, tooth to coupling, uh, tooth to coupling uh, is given in terms of uh, uh, young mill coupling constant times n, so that natural scale uh, inverse of that is a, a mass scale coming from string length scale, uh, square divided by n. So even though string length scale is, uh, uh, or mass scale is ms square, uh, because of tooth to coupling is divided by n, in large n limit, uh, uh, strong interaction appears in much lower energy, which is ms square divided by n. And also, interestingly enough, in this theory, one can have a weakly, weakly coupled uh, phase in Coulomb case, where if the uh, Coulomb expectation value is uh, much bigger than uh, string length, uh, mass scale given from string theory. Now, <clears throat> so T-duality is what we expect because those are not uh, quantum field theory. So if we compactify on a circle, one comma one little string theory and the uh, two comma zero little string theory should be T-dual to each other. And also one expect uh, uh transition at uh, temperature uh, given by ms over n square root of n. Yeah. For little string theories? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, because if you start from Young mill theories, n square, if you start from two comma zero theories, n to cube, uh, I suspect it's n square. But Or oh, sometimes uh, it's easy, maybe. So you see, string theory is so infinite, right? So, you, right. Yeah, I'm not sure how infinity is there. No, so sometimes uh, if I have a t to the fourth, that, uh, let's say t to the energy density is uh, t to the six, right? Energy density is t to the six. And, uh, and the, that, you know, Hegadon transition is getting lower and lower as you increase the end. But I mean, right, it's string theory, so I guess it's hard to say. As Jack says, it's infinite, something. And then there is a holography with a linear Tilotone background. Uh, up. Right, so. To show the T duality, we have to calculate a uh, partition function in 2,0 theory and 1,1 theory. 
and they show uh, they are identical. So in two commodity theory, only thing we have to is add the one more uh, string uh, along T2 brains, which uh, takes care of this uh, periodicity. And uh, one can, again, calculate the partition function with the Cuba theory along the strings, and then uh, uh, this generalization that class of partition function, where some each of n strings, small ni string generate a uh, Young diagram of side of ni, and then you sum over all Young diagrams, and then uh, partition function contribution to the string is given by this way. Now, in one comma one case, it's easier because <coughs> it's a 60 young theory, and then uh, there is a standard uh, ADHM dynamics, and it's just a lift of the uh, 5D uh, instanton calculation we have done. And then, uh, so here's the, again, uh, this contribution is made of perturbative part and stringy part, and the, uh, n counts the instanton strings. Yeah. Yeah. No, there are two ways of elliptical lifting. So I, I showed the, how you lift the uh, two comma zero partition function of super conformal field theory. Right, then that becomes one comma one because you have a Young theory. You have a single kind of instantons. Uh, 2 comma 0 has uh, uh, multiple instant and self dual strings, so there's... But anyway, uh, that, that's uh, rather simple. That I show, I argued, yes. But uh, this, this one is an elliptical generator and it has a lot more information in there. Uh, remember, I did a 2 comma 0, 60 calculation using uh, self your strings and then I got the same answer. But here, I'm doing 1 comma 1 uh, little string uh, partition functions. So, <coughs> well, interesting thing is that uh, there are perturbative paths and then uh, stringy paths, and uh, basically a uh, partition function is counting uh, matrix degrees of freedom. So in 61,10 0 series, you, are, you have not only Kalatang part of Young theory is matrix, uh, W boson part is also matrix. So there are two kinds of contributions, and uh, here is the uh, there's perturbative sum to the uh, partition function. So to show the uh, partition uh, T duality between two, we have to compare the, uh, uh, <coughs> the uh, partition function. Now, of course, we know T duality is exchanging between winding and momentum. Uh, interestingly, one comma one little string theory is, uh, is young mill theory. So when we do circle compactify, we can turn on the gauge holonomies, which led to uh, fractionalization of momentum along the strings along the torus. And two comma zero theory, uh, little string theory in two comma zero, we have NS5 brains separate between uh, T5 brain, uh, T6 brains. So there are many kind of uh, T2 brains inserted between uh, NS5 brains. So that leads to fractionalization of strings. Now in one comma one, uh, there's no, there's single instance, so there is no fractionalization of windings. And two comma zero, there's no fractionalization of the momentum. So T duality is uh, when you exchange uh, winding and momentum, uh, this fractionalization also exchanges. Uh, so here fractional momentum, here fractional strings. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, sure. Well, here it is. So each partition function is made of the perturbative part and the uh, stringy parts. And the, only when you sum them up. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I calculate this uh, 2A partition function and 2B partition function, I extend you. You sure? Oh, that, that doesn't have a t-duality. That doesn't have a t-duality. You have to calculate uh, that generate one comma one string partition function. That doesn't have a t-duality. Because t-duality is extending momentum and winding, perturbative momentum becomes uh, winding in non-perturbative part. So, uh, yeah. Well, I added all the negative partition function. I guess I cannot say more than that. No, the question is, you know, oh, there is a. Uh, no, the class of partition function is modularities and so on, but it's nothing to do with the T dualities. T duality is changing, going from type 2A to type 2B. And uh, uh, so you have to do winding and uh, momentum exchange. So, Uh, completely different. I uh, I gave you answer. Uh, so here is the uh, part of t I'm stringy part of the type to B, and then there's part of the part. Two A stringy part is a fractional uh, uh, strings, so there are lots of string uh, chemical potentials. On the other hand, the uh, uh, type to B there's only one string, so there's one string chemical potential. So they are completely different. So string, uh, on the other hand, the fractional uh, part of the uh, uh, momentum is hidden in, I guess I missed the uh, uh, holonomy for KG groups. So, so I gave the uh, answer for. No, so each one of them is uh, an instant of partition function. This, this, this is an equation of partition. So mobile, only then, uh, right, each winding becomes momentum. Right, so, uh, okay, so, so we have to exchange the winding and momentum and the uh, chemical potential for fractional momentum, which is KG holonomy, becomes uh, chemical potential for fractional strings. Now, uh, there are, among them, there is a uh, type 2B, 2, 2A case. Uh, remember, we calculated using introducing NS5 brain with a single D6 brain. So it turns out when D6, D2 brain is going around the circle, you can uh, bound to D6 brain, single D6 brain, without touching the NS5 brains. So one has to take care of that part of the uh, additional bound state from the this partition function. So we have to divide these contributions and then uh, you can put a uh, Boso partition function in plastic form here. There's center mass contribution, which is the basically counting the motion of the uh, uh, physical state on R4, plus uh, all the chemical potentials to turn on. For example, SE2 case, we have two chemical potentials turn on along the either fractional uh, winding or uh, including fractional momentums. So, <clears throat> For example, U1 little string theory, which is very simple, turns out that uh, both uh, generate the same function because uh, ADHM for both is identical. And then T duality is uh, exchanging winding and momentum, which means uh, uh, because they generate the same function and uh, generating different uh, uh, exchanging is T duality, which means the full partition function should be symmetric function on the, the winding and momentum. So here is the, uh, this partition function, put it in plastic form with central mass part written. And then uh, I1, this is the central mass part, and JSP is the uh, single particle partition function uh, written in form where Q prime is uh, uh, momentum, y, W prime is winding, and then uh, T, U, V, uh, Y is various chemical potential. And if you look at it, that's all a symmetric function of Q prime and W prime which proves the t-dualities. Now, it turns out uh, Iqbal uh, showed that some time ago, it should have triality, and uh, 
if we define the new charges so Q hat and W hat and Y, then partition function has to, can be re rewritten in terms of hat variables. And then uh, uh, it is uh, symmetric on the exchange of three hat variables. So the same partition function, you can re-express it. Then you can see everything is symmetric on the exchange of three variables. And reason is that if you go to a stringy picture after t dual pictures, so we had a d6 brain and the ns5 brain, single ns5 brain, we can t dual it, then we have a, a ns5 brain, d5 brain webs. And then there you can see when you put it on the torus, it's uh, symmetric on the exchange of three. Yeah. Right, which is uh, decoupled from the right, right. So it's uh, just warming up. Then uh, let me show you. It's... Yeah. So little string theory, which is free. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah, it is funny theory. Yes. Hmm. Oh, so here I introduced Q, Y, so I'm, I don't know explicit function. <laughs> right, so there, are, right, so exactly, so there are a lot more mathematical structures. We, I mean, we heard of various uh, analysis of the partition functions, so I'm sure there are a lot more uh, mathematical structures uh, about which I'm completely ignored, but you are right. Uh, and things I, we do is just to calculate the necklace partition function, expand it, but there are a lot more mathematical structures under which I'm sure uh, this trialities or duality can be, uh, t duality can be seen more explicitly. Oh, right, of course. Right, but I'm saying that the, when I show the partition function, it's a lot more than set of function because we have to add all that. So there is a, something about uh, double set of functions. I think maybe equal genus two partition function. There is something. Right, right. So there are something. Uh, there are a lot more structures. Right, so now let's look at the uh, SU2 case uh, with two NS5 brains. Uh, I gave you algorithm to calculate partition functions, and then uh, either you can do it type 2A and type 2B. Both cases, uh, you introduce, we have two chemical potentials, and then uh, we have a, a integer of momentum here, here fractional windings. Of fractional momentums, and then there is integer windings. So this is the partition function. We sum them all the windings, then we put it into plastic form, and then uh, expand it in the in terms of coefficient with central mass part uh, taken out. And here is the uh, each coefficient for various chemical potentials. Some says that this is the necklace of partition. I know that this is the Kupakuma Vapa invariant, and uh, if we look at the coefficient, uh, then uh, you can, we can calculate type 2A and type 2B, and they generate the same numbers. So that's how you see uh, this whole warming of exercise in a way that we are able to calculate partition function, and then uh, we look at the plastic exponent, then we will look at the coefficient, and the type 2A and type 2B generate the same answer. So that confirms that what we have done is right. Now, again, remember T and Y is like epsilon 1 and epsilon plus and epsilon minus, so you have to regroup them again together. And the, they, they are basically counting the number of angular momentum along the uh, 1, 2, and 3, 4 plane plus uh, this uh, R charges. So you have to group them together, then the coefficient will come out to be integer. Right, so that's uh, 2,0 and 1,1. T duality between two theories. Now let's go to 60. There are less supersymmetric, super conformed free theory and little string theories. There's vast view of those theories, and uh, let me just focus on very small part of it. 
so we can think about uh, T-type singularities on which uh, there are, uh, so T-type singularities, you have O6 brains with T6 brains and then NS5 brains sprinkled on it. So I have O6, then T6, and NS5 brains, and then it get fractionalized into uh, half NS5 brains. And then if gauge group is SPN, and that's SO2N plus 8, SO2N plus 8, and then you can have a, this uh, linear cube of the SPS, so uh, 60, uh, one comma zero, conform field theory where SP, they are all coupled to tensor modes, such a way uh, things are normally free. Now you can wrap these things around, and it becomes a little string theory. So <clears throat> this is the simplest possible little string theory of this type. I have a SPN coupled to tensor, then it wraps to SO8 plus 2N. And tensor mode is basically uh, measuring the scalar part of tensor is measuring the distance between uh, half and S5 brains. So in this case, uh, because there are only two half and S5 brains and circles fixed, there's only one tensor mode, even though it looks like there are two. And it turns out that you can circle, uh, because we are showing the T dualities, we have to compactify along the world volume of the NS5 brains, T duality, S duality, then we end up with uh, quiver theory of uh, SO type. And uh, this is the quiver theory for uh, this theory. So both of them are 60 theory related to each other by T dualities. So to calculate, uh, uh, show the t-duality, we have to calculate, uh, now in this case, not only um, because we have non-trivial gauge group, momentum is fractionalized, also winding is fractionalized to two pieces. And in this case, momentum is fractionalized a little bit, but winding has been fractionalized a lot more. So we have to calculate the partition function for two cases, uh, and then show that they are t-dual to each other. So to do that, uh, each case, uh, partition function is made of perturbative part and uh, stringy parts. And the stringy part, uh, we have to look at the dynamics of strings. And so if we look at the, this four of them, SP, SO, SP, SO, then there are four kinds of instant, uh, strings, N1, N2, N3, N4, and then or K1, K2, K3, K4, then there is a, a quiver theory of living on uh, instant on strings which is self dual string connecting these half NS5 rings. Similarly, uh, you look at the T-type quiver theories, and then there are uh, <coughs> many type of strings, and then on which, again, there is uh, instant of strings uh, living on each gauge group, and then there is a uh, quiver theory uh, on instant of strings. So using uh, this uh, two kind of quiver theory, one can calculate the instant of string contributions, and then we indeed show that two uh, theories match each other. Okay, so that looks like very complicated. It's all warming up some sense. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, our goal is uh, uh, trying to go to the case where it's impossible to calculate. So now we use bootstrap uh, uh, using T-duality. What it means is that there are some theories where there is no uh, technique to calculate the instant on stream partition function like uh, E-type. Or some cases, we have calculated the instant of string using ADHM, but if you look at partition function, it has pole along the direction where instant is going away from NS5 ram, which shouldn't be part of a uh, little string spectrum, right? Little strings should stretch the, uh, stuck to the NS5 ram, so it should have just pole along the one, two, and three, four directions, not transverse directions. So it's like uh, there are uh, ADHM, uh, Dynamics captures the, even the physics of the uh, string living, living around the, this neck between connecting long neck between connecting Coulomb and Higgs face. Right, and turns out uh, this elliptic genus for string has a lot more properties. I think it, I'll wrap up in five minutes instead of going through all the details. It has various uh, uh, modularities, and especially the it has to be weight zero and index ij, 
I given in terms of various chemical potentials. And uh, as a 2D series uh, uh, of the string, because one comma zero or two comma zero theory has uh, uh, anomalies related to uh, various uh, R tidy uh, R gauge field, and that generates anomaly flow to 2D theories, and that fixes uh, the characteristic of what kind of string dynamics you have to have. So that fi uh, fixes some sense this index of the each uh, string partition function. So remember, we have the sum of the all the strings. And for each string, there's different index, different uh, partition function. Now, so we do, for example, even 2 comma 0 and 1 comma 1, so T type case. Uh, turns out that you can calculate the T type in this side. Again, this one is a pole, which is going outside. And the 2 comma 0, again, some cases we can calculate, some cases we cannot, because uh, previous case, there was a very nice uh, uh, gauge group, but here there is no gauge group. Even though it's D-type keyword, it is just a tensor mode. And then we don't know what to calculate. So, <clears throat> because we know two sides of stories, and remember, T-duality means we know the perturbative part. And uh, because perturbative part becomes stringy contributions, and the stringy contribution, if we know a little bit, then perturbative part fixes the uh, stringy part much better. So, you are sort of bootstrapping. You start with both part, you know part of the part, and you are building up the stringy contributions. So stringy part can be obtained partially by T-duality. There are still the runaway mode which we cannot control, but we did quite a bit of, uh, bit of effort to find the uh, elliptic genus for a uh, uh, D-type case even when there is a runaway mode. And also, another example is SO32 little string and the EA cross EA little string. I mean, this is one of the simplest uh, theory one can uh, look at it and calculate elliptic genus. So, for example, SO32, we have a, a, a NS5 range on which there is SP N gauge group with 16 fundamental hypers plus one anti symmetric hyper. And then, if we have K instantons, then the gauge group is OK gauge group with symmetric hyper plus blah, 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 and then you can calculate the ellipse genus. No big deal, but again, it has a pole where the string is moving away from NS5 range, so, uh, so we don't know what to do. So we have to use this uh, bootstrap between these two, and then we have calculated quite a bit of the partition function, but we haven't got it all. So to conclude, uh, <coughs> one comma one, two comma, uh, or two comma zero B and E type little string series, uh, partial results are known now, but still uh, full answer is uh, unknown. Uh, as uh, <coughs> it's mentioned, uh, there are a lot other way of approaching the uh, elliptic genus. So there is flow formula, which is, looks like extremely fancy, but doable. And there is a DM algebra. I've been hearing from lots of people working on the uh, 5D exactly solver models where they have fancy technology to calculate uh, elliptic genus, but I don't think uh, they haven't got far to calculate this kind of problems. And also, as I said, one comma zero theory is extremely rich uh, class of uh, theories, and one of simplest case like uh, heterotic uh, little string theory, uh, we don't know the answer yet. <coughs> and uh, little string theory is uh, very rich. I mean, uh, we haven't explored the of ADS, I grip the side of the stories, but it's very rich. Uh, there are many new insights to be obtained, and uh, still, yeah, there are a lot to be discovered. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. So, to come, oh, when people calculate a uh, uh, partition function on, on S5? Yeah, so in that case, I mean, there are two ways of approaching the partition function of two comma zero theory. One is to make S1 to be small. And then you have S5, then uh, you add uh, uh, the class of partition function on the three point. 
Another one is S1 is S1 is uh, S5 is uh, S1 over CP2. So you so you can load out S5 divided by GK. Oh, zero bounds to eight, but not. Yeah, but T type case again. But the T type case, you would say maybe there is a mode which is bound to O five, O six, O five, but not to the T five. That sort of thing. But the the pole structure is not that easy to separate these things easily. No, it doesn't work. Yet. So. The thing I want to do is first showing the t-duality in uh, heterodic and without little string theory. Uh, even that is not shown in some sense. I and mean, people know it should be, but not in terms of uh, a partition function in eight dimensions. So then maybe there's some warming of exercise. Then maybe there's a string contribution. You can take it out, then things become finite. Okay. So those of you